All right, guys, welcome back. Um, today, I want to go over a topic that uh, I feel there's some unnecessary, um, not necessarily, what's the word I'm looking for, discrepancy in, in different methods of, of how to do certain procedures. Um, when it comes to adjusting valves, um, one of the most common ways that I've seen out there, and even it's how I used to do them, very, very early on in tinkering. I'm talking, you know, high school days, just like everybody else out there, where um, we all thought that uh, bringing any corresponding cylinder up to top dead center on compression stroke, you could adjust both the intake and exhaust valves. When it comes to adjusting valves, there is only one method that's going to ensure that your valve train is set up 100% properly. You know, again, when I was in technical school, I learned, you know, I did a lot of internships and a lot of race shops and they pretty much put me on the right track and they explained to me uh, why they did what they did. Um, and basically what I've done here, this is the Dart 427. Um, and I just want to go over with you guys uh, how I adjust rockers uh, and the proper sequence to do them. All right, so for example, this valve right here is my exhaust valve, and this one right here is the intake valve. So the proper method, as stated before, is not to bring the piston up to top dead center on compression stroke and adjust both at the same time. The reason being is because if you have an aftermarket pretty aggressive cam, which most all of us do, uh, a lot of the lobes are pretty aggressive, so um, and some of them are asymmetrical. So, you know, bringing the cylinder or the piston up to top dead center is not going to ensure that the roller from the lifter is directly 180 degrees out from the peak of the lobe, whichever one you're working with. So that's the goal, is to get the lifter exactly 180 out from the peak lobe lift, of the cam and this ensures that you're actually on the heel of the cam lobe and that way you, you can adjust each valve properly when you bring them up to top dead center and adjust both depending on what kind of overlap and how aggressive your ramp rates are you can actually have six seven ten thousandths worth of lift either on the back side or the front side of whichever lobe is you know being adjusted so to speak so once again, there's really just one method to do this. And what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the crank over by hand and we're going to start watching these push rods and see what they do. And depending on what they do is going to be the sequence in which I adjust these rockers. So let's get to it. So right now, my exhaust valve is starting to open. So actually, I'm going to stop right there. So the proper sequence is when your exhaust valve on any given cylinder begins to open, stop turning the engine over and adjust your intake valve. And that's what we're going to do now. And again, guys, we've all put rockers on, but the flat side of the trunnion faces up. We're just going to verify that. There's plenty of lube on this uh, rocker right here. And just rest it in. And we're going to take our poly lock. And be sure that this set screw is backed out quite a bit. Um, so we're going to run this on. And we're going to run them down to zero lash. So you want to just grab the push rod and spin it. And there's just a little bit of friction. Alright, so that's zero lash. And at this point, depending on your cam company's recommendation in conjunction with your lifter manufacturer you want to get a good ballpark of how far after zero lash do you need to turn the adjuster nut some say a quarter which is pretty rare but usually a half turn to three quarters of a turn of this nut will get the proper preload for again for whatever the cam company and the lifter company say um, i'm going to take an average between the both which is about five eighths worth, little past half. And then I'm gonna show you what I do after that to lock them down.
All right, guys, at this point, you want to run your set screw down while holding your wrench. And this is where some people do things a little differently. What I'll do is set the set screw as tight as I can get it, but I don't stop there. What I'll do is I'll turn the wrench as much as I can to jam this set screw into the top of the rocker stud. <clears throat> Just like that. So what I've done essentially is gone a little past half in the adjustment tighten the set screw and then in conjunction tighten just a little bit more and that gets me around the five eighths of the adjuster nut so that one's ready to go now what we want to do is watch this intake valve we're going to watch it fully open and start to close when it starts to close we're going to stop and adjust the exhaust valve. Fully open and begins to close. We're going to stop. Now we're going to install our exhaust rocker and adjust accordingly. That's all there is to it, guys. Fully adjusted. I really should have done a video on this a long time ago. But there you have it, guys. That's the R2 adjusting valves. It, now, does it take a little longer to do each one? Yes, it does. But trust me, guys, the power gains. And knowing that you can sleep good at night, knowing that your valves are adjusted, the only proper way out there is uh, well worth it in the end. Thanks for watching.